And we're back with another Pico CTF challenge, this time password crack five. Description, can you crack the password to get the flag? Download the password checker here and you'll need the encrypted flag and the hash in the same directory too. Here's a dictionary with all possible passwords based on the conventions we've seen so far. So I'll go ahead, I'll download all of these. And we can see back here in VS Code, we have this code appearing, the different files that we've already downloaded. If you haven't watched Password Crack 3, I would highly recommend it as we walk through uh, really the structure that's gonna solve all these problems and just explain everything much more slowly. Here, I'm gonna just quickly touch on the changes. We now have a dictionary that text, it has about 650,000 possibilities, all of the two byte combinations that are possible. And we can see where again, we're prompting for user input here. Then we hash the user's input. We check if it's the correct hash. And if it is, we get our flag. The only difference between this and the last problem is we're not given a list in the code. Instead, we're gonna to have to create our own at this point. We'll do so by opening this dictionary.txt. So we'll say with open to open the file. I need the full path to dictionary.txt, which I'll get with print working directory down here. You can see this is in my download directory. lowercase d, dictionary.txt. We'll open this as dictionary. And then what we wanna do is we want to read each line of the dictionary. So we'll say dictionary.readlines. And we'll say this is lines. And then for each line in lines, uh, I know this is a list that's being returned here. One, because it makes sense. And two, because the, the completion that VS Code gives me tells me the signature of this method, which is that it returns a list of lines. So we're gonna loop over those lines. And for each line, We will run it through the password checker. And we want this to simulate like it's coming from the user's input. So rather than prompting like we would have, we'll pass this as a variable. And we are going to have a ton of output, 65,000-ish potential bad passwords. So we definitely don't want to print every bad password. So let's go ahead and let's just make sure that we have this correct by debugging. So we can see we've opened this dictionary file. You can see right there the name of it. That looks correct. We've got a ton of lines but you'll notice we also, we have a slash N on the end of them. What's going on there? Well, that's the new line character. That's the way that the, the computer understands that each one of these lines is, is a line and not just one continuous group of characters. Let me open this in, let's see, let's do a hex editor quickly and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So in downloads, we want to open dictionary.txt. And I know this is a little hard to read, but I'll highlight a section here. In the center, you have all the data and then 
in this right area, you have the interpretation. So for example, the first one is all zeros. The second one is a one, two, three. And you'll notice we have these characters that are being interpreted as a dot, but they're not really a dot. They're a new line character. And they're a way that text editors can look and they can say, oh, I should space this because in the file, it's just a series of bytes that goes on and there's, there's no indication of a space so, or a new line. So you need that. And that's causing us a problem right here, this invisible new line character. So what we should do is we should use the strip functioning function, excuse me. We will do a strip. And when we look at the um, guidance that this gives, well, that's, that's not, I need to stop it apparently for the guidance to come up. Returns a copy of the string with leading and trailing white space removed. White space is anything that's invisible that's used for formatting purposes. So what this will do is it will take each line and it will return the line without the white space, which is exactly what we want. And this is really important because the white space is going to mess up the hash. So for example, if, if you do something like echo uh, ABC into MD5 sum, that will not be the same as say ABC space. See how those differ? So we need to get rid of that white space. And now that we've done so, let's try debugging again. And what we can see is we have a nice clean value that we'll pass in. We try the hash, doesn't work for that value, but that's okay. Let's let this run. And we can see right there, we get our flag. Let's go ahead and let's go over and submit it. I also want to just quickly show you how annoying this would have been if we hadn't removed this line. If we continued to print, this is the wrong password for each password we tried, you'd get thousands of lines of that. That's terrible. So I know I didn't, uh, I didn't spend a lot of time debugging this and, and walking you guys through it, but that's because if you go to password crack three, we cover most of this in, uh, in a lot of detail and really set the table for this. I lost my copied value, so I have to copy it again. Let's go back and submit. And it works. Thanks. Have a good one.